if you're not able to really almost every day, but at least three, three days a week, watch these, the markets in whatever time zone you're in, but from about a half an hour before the cash open to about an hour, an hour and a half into the cash open. If you're trading stock index futures, if you don't have that time, then no amount of post anything's probably going to work too well for you for this asset class for day trading stock index futures. Um, so you got to start with that. You got to understand the, the time to, just to create the data and have enough stuff to even reflect on. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you, if you come in and wait for some major a plus setup, but you only can trade two days a week because you have a job and you have kids and all this day trading stock futures might not be for you. Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode. Before we get started, make sure you show a little love. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave us a review, any other platform that you're on, whatever the love looks like, show a little, and then let's get started. It's a very special guest that we have on today. It's a very special episode here on the YouTube channel for a few reasons. One, you are, uh, Futures Fanatic, the first ever second repeat guest. Oh my on goodness. The First ever. So this means we've cycled through all the interesting people on the internet. We're back to doing <laughs> round twos. Uh, right. But I am very excited that you had on. The first time that you were on the channel, you yeah. were somebody I knew nothing about. And okay. as we dove into that conversation, it was very exciting to get to know you. It was very interesting. And I became a very big fan of you. Coming back for round two, the cat's out of the bag. We all know that you're great. And there won't be any surprises on that front. But Checks in the mail. Yeah. 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 No, no. But I will yeah. say this. Um, it is very exciting to be talking with you again. And I think that this should be said. I think that I want to be one of the people to say it. There's a very few people that I know personally that I would be very excited just to sit down with and just to talk to and just to ask questions and just to hear talk back to me. You are one of the people in that category. And uh I'm very, very excited to have a follow-up conversation with you, to talk with you. There's a ton I want to talk with you about today. And now that the mushy stuff is all out of the way, why don't we just jump into it? And, sure. But uh, by the way, real quick, right back at you in the sense that um, uh, at, a, at a high level, I appreciate all of us that are trying to create more awareness around the best asset class for, for daily trading, you know, which for daily income, which is the futures markets. I mean, compared to the stock and crypto guys, we got a lot of work to do. Um, yeah. And then also, I'm sure we'll get into it today that that you've broadened some of your uh, audience out to these programs to help people learn how to how to how to trade these markets with very little of their own capital. We'll get into that. But so thanks for creating content around that. I think we all want to band together. Uh, we're not competitors. We're just trying to to grow this pie so that more people really trade the right things if they're going to be day traders. Very well said. It's a good, good way to segue into, why don't I ask you, this is just the first question. Since the last time you've been on the call, it's been months. So mm -hmm. why don't you just kind of briefly fill in, um, what have you been up to? Catch us up on everything. Don't leave anything out. What have you been doing? <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot more of the same. Um, one, one kind of exciting thing is I, uh, I decided to, um, uh, to commission some land and build, place, uh, build a place down in Costa Rica. Um, where I go frequently, and then also in Bali. Uh, so you guys are all invited around this time next year. The one in Costa Rica will be done sooner, but it's going to be like a vacation home slash trading compound where I'll have an entire real actual trade floor where maybe four or five of us can trade. Um, but selfishly on the Bali thing, it's my way of also beginning to get into retirement, get away from the screen since basically the market hours are in the middle of the night over there. So I'm not going to be in surf uh land and be you know asleep all day so we'll maybe work a little bit from not a bad job right we'll work from like 10 to 11 at night we have our entire day then we just uh uh go to sleep so that's going to be exciting uh, at least on the bali side uh and then also um i've gotten really into options on futures which i think we'll talk a little bit about on the micro futures so uh i think there's a tremendous opportunity for those that are moving through these prop programs or trading their own live accounts to begin to learn a little bit more about these products and we can talk more about it during the talk today but i've probably never been more excited about anything even more excited than uh the micros i knew the micros would be successful before they came out but now these options on futures that are finally starting to get some decent liquidity i think they're going to provide a really good opportunity for uh for day traders 
Awesome. Okay. Very excited to jump into all of that. Very cool about the, the Costa Rica and the Bali thing. Uh, it would be very you were on nice the road maybe. for a while, right? Sorry to interrupt, but you were you were doing a little traveling, right? This summer or late late fall? Um, I was, yeah. I've been back yeah. for about a month, and I'll tell yeah. you, it really it really rekindled the gypsy fire inside of me. I'm actually mm. in the process of trying to sell this house and uh, get back out on it. Yeah, it's the yeah. the the road is calling me. <laughs> as it were well and that's but, why we do this right i mean it's a skill that that leads to that sort of laptop lifestyle obviously you can't bring screens of that size with you and stuff but um, it's good to hear i think uh that's why you know it's a hard way to make an easy living and we want to reward ourselves when we can 100 percent, 100 percent. and maybe on a future day we'll have a, a podcast episode on the trading floor in costa rica i would yeah put that on my vision board as something to look forward to okay uh let me ask you this i have kind of um uh, uh, an idea in my mind of the direction I would like us to go. And there's some stuff I want to talk about, maybe some just general softball questions that the people want to know. And yeah. I'd be interested yeah. to know as well. Let, let me ask you this, Rod, would you ever consider, or have you considered, or are you, are you in the process that we don't know about uh, writing a book? Um, I, I've certainly considered it and I would, it would probably be using one of those, uh, uh, ghostwriting services a little bit where I'd have a lot of influence. I mean, I, I, I barely have trouble getting through, you know, courses that I've been promising to members for a while. So getting through a whole book, I mean, I've, I've thought about it. Um, could be something I, I, I might do in, in the future. I don't know if you've been following this latest release of this uh, chat GT bot, but some of the stuff that has just been released around uh, AI is just getting crazy, you know, and there's another product that's designed to write blog posts and other things like that. And I've, I've been told that people are already writing books and the thing's only been out for like a month or so in terms of actually getting it done. So I might research that. And if it was true to my voice and things like that, um, I, I would consider it. Very good. Very good. On the same vein there, what's your opinion? And would you say that you know of any really good trading authors that have written books uh, in the world. And I'll say it maybe to preface it like this, because I do feel that we live in kind of an interesting time with books specifically. Yeah. And I get asked a lot about trading book recommendations. Mm -hmm. And it seems like pe when somebody used to write a book, it was this way of like really sharing something that you knew with the world and passing on information. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. it seems like if somebody writes a book, it's either trying to sell you something else <laughs> or it's a way of trying to create some type of social proof. And yeah, it's a brand building exercise a lot, you know. Yeah. I'm a little discouraged with the state of the book market. Anyway, yeah. so I'm a little bit of a pessimist about it. Would you agree with that? Or would you say that, no, there's some really good authors out there that you would recommend that write good books on trading specifically? Yeah, I, I get it. I get it too. And and the fallbacks are, are, um, are, are often the same. You'll hear about the market wizards and I like Jack Schwager and that kind of stuff. And some of my friends are featured in, in those books. Um, so, but overall, uh, um, I'm not a fan of many of the past or future in terms of a way to sort of orient yourself for, it depends on what the goal is. Like if you want to be entertained in, uh, there are a lot of books that have a speculative slant to them that aren't about trading. Like Victor Niederhofer's book is, is fantastic. A poker book, like, uh, positively fifth street, which is about an, an author going and playing, uh, in the world series of poker, having never played poker before and all the all the stuff of the gamblers in, in Vegas and stuff like that. Um, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator is probably something everyone should should read. That's probably the one that everyone should read. But then when you get down to the specifics, like Trading in the Zone and stuff like that by Mark Douglas, they just haven't been my vibe. Now, a lot of people in my group, we have a whole channel on that, like Headspace and books and things. It, and I've been very vocal. It's just not my vibe because... Um, I just, as you know, it's screen time and it's experiential. You have to develop your own situational fluency and flow. So, um, I think there's a place for them, but I would gear towards the ones that are more interesting to read and, uh, from, from actual traders and speculators, you know, and then shout out to my buddy, John Neto. I mean, he wrote this book that weighs, I think it weighs about 45 pounds, <laughs> not exaggerating. It's called the global macro edge. Um, I see John now in the gym quite often here in Vegas. Uh, we work out at the same place. And um, I mean, he's brilliant and he's in the latest uh, Market Wizards book, but that thing is a hard read because it's hardcore. Like if you want to, you know, read something from a probably bona fide genius who has earned his living in the markets forever, um, that's hardcore and it's going to 
do it for you. But again, in terms of, and sorry, John, in terms of like a, an interesting quick read, it's not one of those. So anyway, I covered a lot of ground there. O overall, I think, you know, spend two hours on the screen for every one minute that you spend reading anything around specifically around trading. Really nice words at the end there. And yeah. you know what? It's, I was smiling when you said it because I actually had this written down when I was going to ask you about authors that you couldn't say Neto because I knew you were going to say Neto. <laughs> and uh, I forgot to say that. <laughs> yeah. But I knew you would recommend him and for good reason. Yeah. He, he donates all the proceeds from the book, which does cost like 250 bucks to, uh, I believe he's a Marine and he donates it to a, a canine, uh, a canine charity that provides, uh, I think, dogs for for vets. That's so it's a great charity. I know that. Very, yeah. very good yeah. to hear. Great. Okay. Um, same kind of informational thing. What about maybe even trading or not trading related? Just with you personally, are you are you into any kind of podcast that you listen to or that you keep up with regularly? Yeah, the podcasting world. My goodness, it's just been. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's so 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 much content. Uh, I can't say I have any. Um, uh, I like Sam Harris. I mean, that's more on the political vein, you know, and he gets into things like religion and stuff. So I, uh, he's just, um, super intelligent. I just like listening to people who Sam Harris has done a couple podcasts, Aaron, where like, I know he might have some notes or something that he's using as a structure, but he, he did a couple where he didn't have a guest and he just spoke for two hours and it is so elegant. It's like, he's reading something that he wrote you know, but he's not, he's just stream of consciousness. So I like him. And then they're all record, they're all videoed now as well, like we're doing right here, right. So um, you, I, I get a lot of clips from stuff that I kind of like, um, you know, I could, I can tolerate a uh, Joe Rogan when he has a, a good guest on somebody I find uh, entertaining. Um, so but I probably don't consume as much of that as I just flat out uh, listen to books or read. Right on. Very good. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe less question on this sign here with the youtube side of things i'd be interested to know is there anybody on youtube that you would look at as a peer and i say this in the frame of even you and i having this conversation i don't consider that i'm talking to a peer well, i would consider this as somebody that i'm looking up to and i'm curious on your side do you most people that you talk to on youtube or that the channels on youtube is there anybody that you look at as this is an equal of mine or a peer of mine or somebody that i would you know be on the or, or somebody that I look up to? Well, that's a great question. I mean, imagine you're you're talking within our space, right? Because we started the conversation by saying, you know, uh, you know, futures right now is still like a fly on a gnat's ass when it comes to our reach and things like that. Right. Um, no, I, I mean, I honestly, I, I look at you and some others that you've interviewed, you know, Deanna, um, I've never met Don Singletary or Singleton or whatever that uh, older gentleman that does. You might try to. Have you ever tried to reach out to him to try to get him? Uh, uh, the website, the site is Day Trading Micro Futures. I mean, that's literally the name of his site. And he's an older gentleman, and he's got a fantastic voice for radio. You know, um, I would consider honestly all of you my colleagues. I don't think I look up to anything. Um, I have been really trying to figure out how to do the same thing you're doing grow this audience and get more people you know because even if we put up sort of clickbait i made this i made that if it doesn't have the the word tesla in the description or some stock that's hot you know no one pays attention right so our space is very small um but that being said i watch other youtube channels of quite frequently that make content specifically about how to grow your YouTube channel, right? Things you, things you should do and stuff like that. And, um, but when it comes to like, you know, colleagues or anything like that, I just like every time I find anybody and I get served up guys that have 500 subscribers that are just talking about their journey through the apex funding experience. I love all that. So I consider all of them, you know, colleagues. Okay. okay. Very, very generous of you and humble. Okay. What about this? Uh, traders past, traders present. Who yeah. would you say, point blank, who's the best trader to ever live? Oh my goodness. The best trade. I, I, I don't, um, I'm probably not a, as much of a history uh, buff of those, of those kinds of things. Um, and also we have to define trading, right? Cause I've definitely, yeah. this is always the thing you define. Um, and I made it very clear that I make 80, 90% of my money from my other businesses 
and I do very well in trading, but I make money from other businesses and from longer term investments, whether those are real estate or, or other things like other things like that. So that being said, when it comes to trader, it's, it's tough because like we would talk about the market wizards, right? And I'll answer the question in just a second, because basically I don't, I don't have one because okay. <laughs> if you look at the market, if you look at the market wizards books and stuff like that, um, I, I find those stories fascinating. I enjoy all the background of the people, the numbers that they put up on a risk adjusted basis and just in general are fantastic, but none of them are traders, like right. day traders. They're, yeah, they're all, yeah. they're all building positions, um, shorter term positions, but they're all building positions. Right. Um, yeah. so for, for that reason, I, I just think that the universe to choose from is, is, and, and all, even people like Linda Rash and others that you've heard of that have been in the, in the world for a long time, or Larry Williams, or guys that built these indicators that we still use, the Bollinger and stuff like that. Um, none of them traded on the same time frames that we trade on. So it's, it's just really kind of a different game. Um, yeah. but you know, I think that, that, uh, I can tell you what to gravitate away from, I think, which is these, you know, guys and gals out there that, that think that showing that they can make and lose $50,000 in a day is, is a, is a good thing or what you should aspire to. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of bad actors. <laughs> so okay. unfortunately, yeah. Okay. Last question before we kind of switch gears a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned options on futures already, and I mm -hmm. feel like I look at you as somebody who's on the in, like for instance, the micro contract. I have a feeling before that ever yeah. became out, before I ever knew it was really hitting for something like the S&P or before we had this push to it, you probably knew it was coming. You probably even were behind the scenes pulling some strings to make it happen. Um, is there something on deck that maybe outside of options on futures, because we're going to talk about this in more detail, but is there something anything in the pipeline that's kind of like big to the space that's coming that people might not know about? If the answer is no, it's fine. Um, I, uh, I'm aware of some, some, we I just mentioned AI chatbots earlier. I, I am aware of some stuff that's happening. And none of this is from the CME or NFA regulation or anything like this. It's just innovation in the space. Um, I'm aware of some, and by the way, algo trading and stuff like that's been around for a long time. You could, you know, use easy language and build things on, on, um, uh, on trade station and stuff. But I believe I know that we are now on the verge of real commercial available things very soon that will allow more people to automate a good chunk of what they do. Now, you automation doesn't mean anything unless you have good ideas, right? Good entries, good risk management. You know what you you want to tell the computer to do. So uh, good news is Aaron's not going to put you and I out of the job, right? They still, people still need to understand how markets work and what they want their automation to do. But, um, you know, the joke was that it was going to be the year of mobile starting in like 2002. And it took until the release of the iPhone and stuff to really have that happen. I think we're on the verge of that for, for AI as it applies to everything, but it can also be applied to automated trading for the, for the retail trader. Very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love that idea of just a lot of the things that I do manually, they could be done better and faster if there was like a, a way to automate that, that doesn't necessarily take anything away from what I'm doing, but just the physical things that I have to do, you know, would make it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think the active. starting point is just going to be on entry logic a lot. We're not, we're not going to create the golden, you know, model or compete with jump or Citadel that has all these people working where they can create a model for every minute of every market condition. But if you're going to trade multi-markets and, and you know where your entries are and the logic, I mean, we shouldn't miss any entries. Computers are really good at that. Yeah. Some simple things would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. I want to uh, switch gears a little bit. I, if it's okay with you, I want to introduce mm -hmm. a brand new segment to the show. Um, I, I know you are somebody that's really got your pulse on the funded trader space. I also know that when it comes to online prop shops that fund and back traders, you know more about this than 99% of the world. It's a fair statement to make. So especially I the, this, the new breed that this new breed that we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I want to introduce a brand new segment okay. called would you fund or pass? Now, <laughs> are you familiar with the game smash or pass? I know the game smash or pass. Yes. Which I prefer as opposed it's binary as opposed to Mary kill or whatever the yes. heck that is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody not, in, uh, not aware, 
the game traditionally smash or pass is where we communicate and we throw out somebody's name. And then the person on the other side would think about it and hypothetically answer, do they want to smash this person as in, you know, get it on with them, do the deed, bump dirties, you know, have sex with them, or if they would pass, maybe they wouldn't be into it. Yeah. Not for them. So yeah, in this it's like segment, hot or not, that's how that's, I think that's the, that's how Zuckerberg started. If you watched uh, the social network. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So in this new segment called, would you fund or pass? What I'd like to do is I'm going to put up a trader. And what I would mm -hmm. like you to do is to answer, would you fund this trader? Would you would take proper money, like a, like a multiple five, six figure account? Would you give them your own capital to trade hmm. or would you pass? And maybe they wouldn't be for you. Okay. Are you okay with it? This, this was not pre-rehearsed. So I have no idea if this is going to be stats or a picture of a monkey or what it's going to be. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into it. If you're game. All right. Sure. All right, first person up, Al Brooks. Now, to be fair, I'm not exactly sure if Al Brooks is still trading. So let's say Al Brooks in his prime, if he's not, he might still be in his prime, no disrespect if he is, kind of one mm -hmm. of the OGs to the trading space, maybe in the retail world. Would you fund Al Brooks with what you know about him with your own capital or would you pass? Well, I think the answer to this, I'm going to... Uh hedge myself a little bit as all traders should which is assuming that these funding arrangements have uh risk parameters associated with them and it's just not open-ended or they have something like a netto score another call out to john netto where it's it's true risk adjusted returns yeah i, I would absolutely uh provide al some capital so smash. smash it's a weird way to do this given that he's an older gentleman but i get the game We'll just stick to fun then. Fun. Okay, we'll fund out. Yeah, fun, yeah, fun. Oh, that's process. right. Fun, fun. That's right. That's what's supposed to be. Fund him. Hey, when the when the human mind wants to go somewhere, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fund him. Al Brooks fun. Okay, next trader. I like this one a lot. Mr. Mm -hmm. Anton, trading's resident bad boy. Would you fund Mr. Anton with your own money? Or would you pass? Uh I'd pass. I, I, all I know of him is his his big uh youtube things that have been replayed from uh you know his uh bombastic kind of style uh teaching this these recruits i guess it's all stock trading though so i i would i would pass on that um i don't think he pass would he would be prepared for the speed and velocity of our markets well said okay moving on mr timothy sykes the penny stock trading Prodigy, would you give this man your own money to trade and to go crazy in the penny stock world, or would you pass? I would pass. Uh, I would. I would fund him to uh, provide some marketing advice, though. Honestly, <laughs> he's been in the game for a long time. We were talking earlier in this about uh, his skill set is certainly there in terms of brand and and marketing. And if I could get him to. Uh, move from pennies or show us how we could grow so i'd fund him there but i I'd, I'd pass on the trading capital right on right on okay moving on mr maurice kenny to be honest i don't know anything about this person but i do see their uh advertisings a lot so i thought maybe you would know them no nope. I, I i gotta pass because I, I don't know who that is excuse me funder pass, funder pass okay very good yeah yeah pass uh, i like that as well okay moving on Humbled Trader, somebody who's absolutely killed the game on YouTube. She's got to have one of the yeah. biggest followings out there. Would you smash? I mean, fund. I meant fun. Sorry. First mm -hmm. girl came up again. Mm -hmm. Fund. Would you fund or pass the Humbled Trader? Uh, I would I would pass. I, I put her in this camp of, you know, warrior wannabes. She's done very well as a warrior wannabe, but it's a warrior wannabe kind of style. And I have a lot of issues with, with that whole world. Now they've done it right. Again, a reoccurring theme. They're killing it in their side of, of the business. But when it comes to uh, the trading, I wouldn't. The, the, vol the, vol the volatility of their P&L, which, which makes for good content, is just not something I'd want to be involved in. Okay, right on. Appreciate the candor. Okay, we got just a couple more of these. We'll fly through them. 
Mr. Day Trade Attic. He's a big trader in sense of another massive YouTube following. He's also a mm -hmm. very large man. You don't see very many mm -hmm. big traders. But anyway, mm -hmm. would you trust this man to use those sausage fingers to be putting your capital at risk? Or would you pass? I don't know who that is. So uh, I'm just assuming that a lot of these re these guys are in the same vein where they're um, they're they're trading stocks, right? Probably or crypto. I don't know who he is, so I'd have to pass. Okay, moving on. FT seventy one, Mister Future Trader seventy one. Some say the best pound for pound trader on the streets. Would you agree? Would you fund Mister FT seventy one, or would you pass? Yeah, I, I would create creates good content. He's he's been in the game a long time. And um, from what I see of him, and he was also, you know, big in Twitter. And uh, again, reoccurring theme, I like everybody that's in our space and helping create content in our space. So absolutely. I don't know if you have Anthony Crudelli on this list, but I'd fund him as well. He's another okay. good honorable yeah. shout out. I got one more yeah. for you. And uh, this one you might have to think a while about but Mr. Ross Cameron, would you, Mr. The Nice Guy of Trading? He's got a certain pot of gold. Yeah, no, not, not, not my <laughs> cup of tea. And, and, you know, I've been very vocal about the fact that, uh, like, I don't know the guy from Adam, and, um, but the fact that I saw a decent amount of pre-market trading and low float stocks uh, I would not be doing that if I was him. I'm not his attorney, but um, I don't know if he's still doing that, but it's, you have a live trade room and you're floating, you're, you're trading. Anyway, I, I would pass. The definition of front running is what a lot of his content is. It's just shocking to me. I guess, you know, the FTC finally got those, those other guys that we won't mention and they had to pay a massive fine. So the, whether it's the FTC or eventually someone like Finn or the SEC, I would definitely not be involved in, in that kind of stuff. That being said, killing it and what he does. <laughs> killing it what he does. Pass it is. Okay, very good. Thank you for participating in the first ever segment of Fund or Pass. And thanks for being a support about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to do a quick time check here. I tell you, the time is absolutely flying by. So I'm going to yeah. just ask you a few kind of um, just questions about you that I'm interested in knowing, and then mm -hmm. we'll, we'll wrap this up. I'm going to skip over, unfortunately, a lot of things I want to ask you. Um, do you have an assistant? I uh, do not for any of the trading stuff. We have, uh, we have a team for, I, I own some solar businesses and those are, you know, legit businesses that it's solar sales so that we sub out the, the installation and stuff. But for what I do on, um, uh the trading related stuff i do not okay right on do, rod do you have kids i do not have any kids no so that makes it i mean a lot easier right i'm <laughs> sure i <laughs> sure, guess sure. i mean from what i from what i hear so yeah At this phase okay. of my life i'm dating uh, women that do have children of different ages so i'm sometimes i play a little dad and mentor and stuff like that but no kids of my own very good do you have a set vacation spot that you don't have to tell me where, but just like a vacation that you take every year, you go to the same spot, the same place at the same time? No, not anymore. When I was married, we had a couple go-tos um, to just to try to use that around, making sure that we could see uh, friends that did have kids that wanted to have a little bit of a getaway. And we would mix it up between um, parts of Mexico, Italy. Uh, we used to go to the BVI quite a bit. Um, uh, but not, not anymore. No, since, since I, I do have the freedom to, to do a decent amount of traveling now that the world's opened up again, I, I don't really have these sort of set. And then all the fun stuff is all falling apart. Like in the last decade, all the get together with all your fraternity brothers for March madness for a few, for the first weekend in Vegas, all, all that, it just doesn't happen anymore. We used to have a whitewater rafting trip that was around for a little bit, but, or a ski house, but unfortunately none of that exists anymore. Oh, I hate to hear that for you. I hate to hear that for you. Yeah, it's, it's a interesting thing to me. I just find it fascinating. I don't know why. I, I never grew up doing it. I've never done it. But it's interesting to me that, that people go to the same place every single year for a trip. And not that there's anything wrong with it. Just interesting to me. Very cool. Uh, can I ask you this? What are your thoughts about sleep? Oh, sleep? Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm fanatical about all, all of that. So I, I wear I wear this thing right here, which is called an aura ring. I, I um, 
does a lot of the same things that an, uh, an eye watch can do, but it's lower profile. I prefer to wear, you know, man jewelry. So the, my one thing that I still, I don't buy them anymore, but I have, I have nice watches and things like that. So, um, so I love my aura ring and I, ch I literally check it every, every morning. Um, it, it provides a sleep score based on all of the various factors, uh, including actually HRV, which is your heart rate variability, which is your body's way of telling you how rested you are for, for the day. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a fanatic about, I'm a fanatic about all that stuff, especially since, uh, you know, I have a five handle in my age now, so you have to be kind of tuned into that. You're a very young man, but let me, let me tell you, it's, uh, it, it, it hits and then you have to, it's more of a mental thing for me because coming from a do anything I want to my body and still yeah. be fine the next day to, oh my goodness, every decision I make today affects uh, tomorrow. So yeah, really into sleep and all the data around it. Very good. Very good. Yeah. It's, I heard somebody say something very interesting and it's, I, I love how in the world it's just noisy. So many people talk, you hear so many words all the time. And then just every yeah. once in a while, somebody says something that just hits you as, wow, mm -hmm. that's a great thing. Somebody said, and somebody said this, they said, if sleep, was not something that we did naturally. If it was something that you took, it would be an illegal substance. Hmm. For instance, what sleep does to you in terms of the benefits to your brain, to your body, to your hormone levels, like what it does, what the benefits are of sleep. If it wasn't naturally, if you had to take a substance to get those benefits, that substance would be highly illegal because of the performance enhancing drug it is. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was just fascinating. It's so true. Like it's, it's so easy to take it for granted because we just do it, but sleep is like a very, it's almost like a little superpower that if you dial that in your life kind of changes. Very interesting. Yeah, I think uh, we, we just live in a, a magical time I mean, whatever we want to say about the time that we're in when, when you have, uh, we no longer have to rely on some study or a doctor or anything like that. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't want to start this apocalyptic thing of like, you know, medicine is all evil. But I, I just mean when it comes to research or things like that, um, whether it's a TikTok video or anything else, there's doctors and people of all different backgrounds sharing all kind of information about everything you could possibly ever want. And now I think we've synthesized down that yeah, there's no way around this whole sleep thing. There's no way I think the the science is done on calorie deficit stuff and just freaking eating less sleep eat less put more st less stress on your body from a digestive standpoint and then you can just pile on the things the supplements that are actually good and most people should be taking and it all comes to uh, a regimen that that you know if it's possible and you just put it in place like you said yeah it's it's the best drug you could possibly take which is um sleep and a moderate amount of exercise and a calorie deficit it's just simple, isn't it? It's just yeah. simplicity. Very cool. Okay. Um, when it comes to, let me ask you a question that would help traders. Let's say <clears throat> somebody is in the mindset that they're trying to improve their trading. They want to get out there, trade. They want to be able to reflect on what exactly happened and then introduce some change so that they don't just keep getting stuck in the same loops, but that they can just make intermecal, uh incremental improvements day in and day out and kind of just create a nice feedback loop of taking action, reflecting on what happened, making any iterations that are needed. Let's say that that's somebody's path. The reflection stage, the, they've taken action, the day is over, specifically, let's say day to day. What would you say is something that they should be focusing on, on the reflection part of what happened on that day? Seems like a very noisy question that I asked. So a uh, let me know if that doesn't make sense or if it doesn't. No, make no, sense. It, it, it does. I think we even touched on this a little bit uh, in our very first interview, because I know you do a lot of pre and post kind of content and things like that. There's 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 nothing wrong with it. I um, mean, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a stage where I, I don't need to look over any yeah. time period much anymore. But that's from, you know, earning the right to to do that. Um, I always fall back on and it's been since, you know, since some of these online trade journals were re uh, released. Uh, start there you use one and whether it's trader sync or trader view or whatever that's trader trader vue not trading view which is the online charting platform 
I mean, you got to start with the data. And I know that the platforms, whether it's Ninja or Sierra or Quant Tower, whatever you're using, uh, Thinkorswim, doesn't matter. You're going to have trading data in there, you know, your fills and your orders and your PL and maybe some other statistics. But the process of actually putting that into a third party tool and then doing qu uh, qualitative on the quantitative is, you know, I can't get anybody to do it. So, that's where I'd start. And then from if you're doing that, then I'm happy to talk to you about the next <laughs> next step. But I can't even get um, I mean, I've shown in my room that I have that back from 07. And then I have it from, you know, I worked with Greg on building trader view. Greg's the guy that he was the founder of Hostgator. And really? uh, he was already a pretty wealthy dude. And uh, he started trader view, he since sold it. Um, but I was like the first guy to ever use the app. And I have data in there from 2011. And I could go back to a day in 2013 or whatever, and I'll have a whole page worth of notes, you know, yeah. in there. So the bottom line is, is it's, it's a process. But before you get to that, you also want to be realistic about the amount of time and effort, uh, time and then effort just to get the baseline data. Like, uh, and I'll finish the, it's a, too long of an answer, but if if you're not able to really almost every day but at least 3 3 days a week watch these the markets in whatever time zone you're in but from about a half an hour before the cash open to about an hour an hour and a half into the cash open if you're trading stock index futures if you don't have that time then no amount of post anything's probably going to work too well for you for this asset class for day trading stock index futures um, so you got to start with that. You got to understand the, the time just to create the data and have enough stuff to even reflect on, right? Okay. You know what I mean? If you, if you come in and wait for some major A plus setup, but you only can trade two days a week because you have a job and you have kids and all this, day trading stock futures might not be for you. Yeah. So any amount of post on your one big trade that didn't go right, but you only trade two days a week, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Big time, big time. Okay, and kind of maybe even say what you just said back to you or differently. Very important to do it. Most people don't. And mm -hmm. something that you've done for a long time. And one of the powerful things about it would be starting. Starting with something that you can do consistently and maybe even building the habit of just doing some type of reflection, whether that's writing down one sentence about what happened the day and how you feel about it or pulling your stats and just putting it into uh, a third party software, just doing something so that you can get in the habit of a baby step that part of post part of reflection is somehow part of your trading business. Now build that as a habit and then just keep going from there because I, I do feel that it can be overwhelming to pull out stats. It can be overwhelming to think about journaling and a lot of things if you've never done it. In a lot of area, in a lot for a lot of people, myself included, this has been an area that you have to grow into. And most mm -hmm. areas of our trading, to me, aren't things that we're just born to do, but they're things that we grow into and we just, for lack of a better word, we become worthy of it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's the reason I even asked as well is because I, I do realize that it's amazing. It's a very hard thing to, um, to stick with and to get people to do as well. So anyway, yep. thanks for the it word. It is super hard. So, I mean, if you wanted something, this I'll do in 30 seconds. If you want something tangible that you can do is any amount of reflection and stuff doesn't matter. Start with this. You need to establish, we're all day traders. We're talking about day trading. You need to establish a daily risk budget. That daily risk budget is informed by a bunch of stuff that I can't get into right now, but let's just say it's 200 bucks. So you know what your daily risk budget is. That's all you can risk during the session that you're trading. Make sure you have a daily risk budget. And then if you can't reflect every day or every week, at the end of each month, 20 to 22 trading sessions, how many times did you exceed your risk budget to the downside? I, if you lost 250 or 275 or whatever, just start there. What's my daily risk budget? Because we're all focused on our daily profit and what, what do we do in this trade or whatever. Set a daily risk budget. And did you exceed that daily risk budget more than three times in 22 sessions? If you traded 22 sessions, if you exceeded your daily risk budget more than three times, your daily risk budget's too big. Um, and we can take it from there. But that's a good place to start if you only want to do something once per month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something very good. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay. 
Um, last time we talked, you were you had available a kind of five part series on trading that was just available. Um, since then, and you might have touched on this at the very beginning of the call that we're on right now, but fill us in. Have what have you been working on, or have you been working on something else? Um, what have you been doing on that side of things? Yeah, so I actually do, and Aaron, if you wouldn't mind, we could put it in the description of this video as well. I'll send it to you or Ruben. Um, I have a 30 video actually, Futures Fanatic course. It's completely free. Um, and it's starts from the it's called the Futures Found Fanatic Foundation course. So it's very foundational on can you back it up? Uh, I'm sorry. What, what did you say? A 30 course? It's 30, it's 30 videos. So you it's, have a 30 it's, video it's not, yeah, it's a 30 video course. It it's very extensive. Um, Is this but new? it's not pardon me? No, no, no. I had that. I had that last time. That's what I mentioned oh. before. So it's not, it's, it's, it's 30 videos. It's, wow. I, I sold it through T3 for about a year and a half for $297 and a lot of people bought it. So, um, but it's everything from what is a futures contract to how the micros work. And uh, it doesn't, it's not really strategy focused. There's six or seven videos on strategies, but it's not meant to teach you my strategy or what I do. It's meant to give you the foundation so you can know nothing about futures other than it's a word that starts with F and you can go all the way through to the very end and understand how prop programs work. So we'll leave a link to that below. Um, and it's, it's, com it's completely free. I think, you know what, I think last time we did a link to my trade room. So maybe we didn't talk about the futures fanatic course. And yeah, then- yeah. And then in terms of what I'm working on, um, it's two parts, but the thing that will probably come to light sooner is uh, uh, a mini course that will be on options on futures, as we discussed. So, um, and just to tease, the, if you're familiar with options at all, the, the thing that makes options on futures super different and more powerful and more interesting than stock options okay. is they're deliverable as the equivalent underlying. So here's what it means. If you're trading one uh, contract in the SPY or the QQQ, the, that's an expensive stock or ETF, right? Let's say the SPY is $400, and but that's deliverable as 100 shares of that, right? So that's $40,000. Um, well, Rod, I don't want to take delivery. I don't want to be short. I want to be long. No, 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 no. You should more often be short. And we're only, so it's going to be a course on teaching how to, how to offer liquidity to the market, how to be a market maker, how to sell options. We're only going to sell. And we don't have to sell as spreads where we limit our, our income um, and limit our risk. We, our risk is just being long or short the underlying at one. So give me, a, I'll give you a quick example. If you sell one MES put at 4,000, Okay, you sell one MES, put it 4,000 micro, because okay, it's micro. Yep. And the price at expiration is below 4,000. Let's say it's 39.90. Okay, you're going to be long one at 4,000, not 10, not 100, not okay. anything else. So what it starts to, to beg the question is, if you understood the power of this, and you had a signal to get long the ES, Aaron, at 4,000, why wouldn't you sell a put instead and get a $30 credit, hmm. which on the ES is $1,500, right? On the MES, if you sold it for $4,000 and it was a $30, you get $150 credited to your account when you sell that put. And your only obligation is to be long at $4,000, which you were going to do anyway. Interesting. You okay, okay. How, you see that? So. So that's what the course is going to, I know the question was about a course. So I'm going to explain, and, and that makes it so much more advantageous for smaller accounts and people that are learning. Like you cannot sell even one spy contract naked, if you will. You just can't. I don't, I don't care if you have $40,000 in your account. You just shouldn't be doing that. It's too big. Yeah. But with the micros, you can learn. Very interesting. Okay. Now what's the deal with uh, these contracts or these options are available currently? they how long have, have these even been a an option uh no pun intended to trade so i'm going to probably mess this up the the micro stock index micros from the cme were released in mayish of 2019 i think they came out with the options about 6 months later i could be way off on that but i know they've been on, around for at least 2 years so uh they weren't that far i believe they were released also in 2019 but it could have been 2020 um, into the pandemic. I just started actually trading them myself. I trade options on 
uh, I had been all about SPX rut and stuff like that, which is, those are equity products, right? Equity index is way, way bigger, create costs a lot more margin. But um, I actually started making markets in these micros about seven months ago using a market making algorithm um, and now just trading them and now wanting to teach about how they work. Very so cool. I've only really okay. been trading them for seven, eight months. Interesting. And yeah. do you think this is something that you will do or somebody will be doing exclusively or this pairs with? the futures trading that the future is just actual contract trading or do you think the the path forward where people will be doing nothing but these options on the futures so great question no they're symbiotic in fact you right. need to the the pl current plan for how i'm going to introduce this is that uh you th my course will kind of be like it will be foundational so i'll explain some stuff but i ain't going to explain what an option is and what a put call is and what a call is or whatever so you're going to have to have demonstrated and I'll have a way of telling this uh, proficiency with, with options. Um, and you will have had to pass one of the futures funding partners programs that I, that you and I are now talking about, you know, like an apex or something, you will have had to pass it and have taken two withdrawals. So now I can't just pass. You have to show that you've taken two withdrawals because I'm not going to have a, uh, a combine or a test for this. But to answer your question, no, it's not independent. They're meant to be symbiotic because here's what's so cool, Aaron. If you sold that 4,000 put, right, on a Wednesday and it expires on a Friday and the market is now going against you, in other words, you're, you're long from 4,000 because you sold a put, you can just short the future and hedge it. You can actually make more money on that position. And if you time things right, you know, so it's absolutely critical that people are aware of how to trade the underlying as well. Um, right. Because the other thing that's super cool about this and which makes the micro so powerful is if you sold a, and I know this, if, if this might, I don't want to confuse members of the audience if you don't know anything about options, but if you do, this will make sense to you. If you sold the 4,000 MES put as an example, um, now you're long from that level, right? And the market's going against you. You could ratio that out and sell three now. Now you're, now you're net, short two, right? And as you take that off, now you're net short long without ever buying again. I mean, you're yeah. net long without ever buying again. So I, it's hard to do without showing it visually. But the the answer is that's why it's so exciting is if you already are trading futures, you're ready for this next step. If uh, once you understand how the options work as well. Very interesting. Very cool. And it's yeah. uh, a very, I'll say, even as you're describing it without anything visual, if you don't have any kind of a background in options, a lot of this just will go right over the head. And it is a, a very slight amount of like sophistication to your trading, as opposed to maybe something just as simple as get in and get out. But yeah, um, yeah. it that it doesn't sound like something overly complicated and that small amount of sophistication. Uh, sounds it's not. You will never way. hear out of my mouth, gamma, rho, theta, spread, you know, none of that. It, it's right. all we're doing is expressing a, a directional like this is what's great about what we do in futures right Aaron is when I'm making an investment we're just expressing a directional trade when we buy or when we should go long or short right we just all we do is hit a different button and there are some additional dimensions to uh, how options work but other than that we're doing the same thing yeah we're, okay. we're expressing a directional bet so in other words we're not selling options to try to collect theta or for things to stay in a range or anything like that no right. uh -uh. <laughs> um okay so you teased it a little bit um this currently is not available to trade on funded programs yeah correct what is if you can speak into it what's the path forward there so the path forward there is that I'm going to be the first person to offer this, um, both the training, to my knowledge, well, not knowledge, I know this is a fact, like I'm making markets in these things. And sometimes I'm the entire open interest myself as an individual in half of the strikes of the MES and the, the MNQ. By the way, if you're familiar with these at all, if you ever looked, a lot of people go, oh, I can't do that because the liquidity is terrible. The liquidity is terrible. Okay. So um and that will be taught in my course. So the liquidity is very bad now. We're going to offer liquidity to the market at the places that we want to be involved, right? Not willy-nilly all over the place. So, um, but in terms of how it gets uh, symbiotic or connected to the existing programs, uh, what will happen is, like I said, some of these firms, unfortunately right now, 
none of them could actually provide it on the platforms they're providing because a uh, little shout out to Ninja. Hey, Ninja. Hey, Ninja Brokerage. If you would do what I'm telling you guys to do, since you paid me in the past to be an advisor, you guys should support short options, which they're not. They don't even support options at all right now. Okay. Now, because Ninja bought Tradeavate and Tradeavate has always had, if you go on your Tradeavate platform right now, you can pull up an options chain. It's right there. You can just drag it in. And if you have data from a prop firm or your own data, you will see the options data. Unfortunately, you can't trade it. You can't trade it long or short. So if that ends up happening, then we have a natural path where Ninja owns Tradeavate. A lot of people know Tradeavate and Ninja. They could trade options in my program on Tradeavate. That might happen sometime next year. In the interim, it'll just be a different platform. Uh, it'll be a different funding agreement. And uh, the people that will qualify are the folks that have gotten through the futures uh, program. Okay. So just so we can connect all these dots, because I would love to be clear about this and for everybody, um, you, the... What you've been working on, are you are you getting ready to launch out where you're going to be funding or backing traders? Correct. Yes. I will be backing okay. them. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So you're I'll be backing be... them and I'll be backing them in a way that that will begin to introduce how we really should do this. It's, it's like, Aaron, if you qualified and you know, you're funded at Apex, you took your withdrawal, you you take my course, you're like, okay, I'm going to give this a go. And I'm like, all right, good. Here's your account. You log in. You know what the balance is going to be? Zero. The balance will be zero, but you will have a certain amount of buying power that you can do to put on your positions. And if you lost $300 that day, your balance will be negative 300. If you made 300, your balance will be 300. That's the way prop programs work. That's the way they should work. So you're not qualifying for $10,000 or $5,000 of my money. I'm giving you some buying power. You'll know what it is. And that's how prop trading should work. So we get rid of all this notional value stuff. And you won't be able to trade a full contract because I'm only giving you $1,500 worth of buying power. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? $1,500 worth of cash that you have in your account to, to win or lose. Yeah. Well, it makes so much sense. And I think that the online prop space, I'm, I'm very thankful for where it's at. I think it's amazing. And I think yeah. that like everything, it just needs to progress and evolution of stuff happens and Honestly, the idea of somebody like you who, and I think I asked you this maybe even off the stream last time we talked, but I was like, you know, would you, are you ever going to start your own? Because I know that the model for how these work is not perfect. And there's definitely things yeah. that could yeah. be improved upon. And to have somebody like you step in who knows how to improve upon these things for the benefit of the trader and for the benefit of um, how things you know, should be without the motivation of maybe the business model side of things, but something that's a little bit more sustainable and something that's more practical for the real world. Um, it's just, it's a thing of beauty. And I hear you're excited talking about it. And I'm excited to uh, hear you talk about this because I, I think it's something that the world needs, the future space needs. And I think it's great that you're doing it. So, okay. Yeah. So you're going to be launching out your own prop firm and then you're going to be offering the uh, a unique way of of starting this, which all the details will come out whenever this happens. So we don't need to nail that down, but it's going to be different kind of rethinking the model. And then um, do you have any kind of a type a timeline on when you're thinking about launching this out? Yeah, it should be ready uh, by the end of January. And I'll have some of members of our, of my group within the next uh, couple of weeks, um, accessing the platform, messing around with it on demo. We'll figure out how to, how to set it all, all up, but it, it's essentially the, the, I'm always the bottleneck and the bottleneck is me producing the materials uh, necessary for people to start. But the infrastructure is, it's all there. The accounts are set up. Uh, the platforms are ready. Uh, I put a big old chunk of cash over there. So we're, we're ready to go. So early next year. Very cool. Okay. We can put all this in the description. If somebody wanted to, I guess, waiting list is the wrong word, but if somebody wanted to kind of keep up with the communications for as it, you know, there's progress to be talked about. Um, is there a mailing list they would join or how would somebody stay in the loop? You know what, just dovetailing on what I talked about earlier is why don't you get some value? Just sign up for the Futures Fanatic course and then I'll have your email and contact information and then everything related to TDG, TDG announcements will be there. So get get that course, whether you watch it or not or you need it or not, 
uh, because I don't really have a, a, you know, a generic list or a waiting list or anything like that. Um, right. But the plan of now also is if you have yet to uh, join any of these prop programs and you're interested in the options on futures from a funding perspective, as I mentioned, uh, it will be in partnership, loose partnership with these firms where you first have to get through that before I'm going to give you the time of day. So uh, mm -hmm. Aaron or Corbs, do you have links as well? You can put them to your code or whatever. Sign up for Apex or sign up for Earn to Trade or sign up for one of them because you're going to need you're going to need that uh, in order to to do the options stuff. Because again, there won't be a uh, an options combine or test. Uh, I'm going to yeah. use the fact that you've got through that program and taken a withdrawal. You don't get to get through the program, get your funded certificate, and blow up your account two days later. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Very, very cool. This is um, very exciting stuff. And I'll say this as just kind of building on what you said, a lot of it is a little bit not finalized because we're just talking about the idea of this and we're just, you're teasing it yeah. right now, but there are so many things that happen inside of every industry trading being no example, you know, no example to this where things get launched out and the people that launch these things out are very ill-equipped to do um, a truly good job and the motivations for why these things are being put forward um, are not for the best reasons. And I think it's very rare to be, it's, it's beautiful to be talking with somebody that has a combination of the motivations being in the right place, that has the expertise to truly do something well, to do something right, and uh, to just see that being pushed forward. I'm a huge fan. I know what goes into just trying to create a good product or just trying to launch something out. And um, big fan of you. I'm a big fan of the fact you're doing this. Before we even talked, I didn't know that this was all happening either. So I'm excited that this is happening. And I'm very excited to figure out, you know, even on a promotional sense, what'll be my part in, uh, in, you know, bringing it forward as well. And I imagine if you're up for it, once you actually launch this thing out, if you're trying to promote it more, we can have a designated stream where we, you just walk me through everything on the channel and we can talk about it more. Oh yeah, more. that would be, you know, and, and shout out to you. I know you've created material specifically for these programs. So, um, you know, if you're watching this, you're probably already subscribed and a fan of what Corbs does. So um, again, the starting point for what I'm going to do is you first need to be familiar with futures and show that you can trade on a risk adjusted basis. Um, so, you know, check out, uh, Corbs' stuff too, um, because that will help you get through uh, get through these programs um, and uh, all the great content that you're you're providing around futures. Because before you get to the options, you're going to have to understand how the the futures just work themselves. Awesome! Very yeah. very cool. Okay, I know we're at our time limit. I, yeah. I know it's Friday, so we all have things to do, and I don't want to keep you. But I will say, uh, big thanks for coming on. It was very cool to speak with sure. you. And uh, just to pick your brain a little bit, to hear out more about you and just to hear you talk is, uh, is a benefit for everybody I know. So um, once again, we'll put links in the descriptions for um, probably the main thing being um, uh, your course or the, uh, the Futures Fanatic program. Join the mailing list so you can be on top of everything. And then, of course, the email, uh, we'll put your YouTube as well. If for some reason you're listening to this video and you're not subscribed to Rod, would highly recommend just go over there, show him some love and uh, subscribe as well. Okay. Um, as a, a saying goodbye or anything, anything you'd like to end with, uh, Rod? Yeah, just um, to you, to your entire audience, you know, ha happy holidays. Let's make 2023 a, a fantastic year. And also just uh, if, if you are a funded trader or even a customer of any of these programs, uh, we'll, we'll say Apex, Earn to Trade, Lilu, Bolinox, Top Step, there's a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to get them to, to do a, uh, maybe it's around the holidays, but to do a, uh, I don't want to call it charity, but like a trade, a funded traders day where we all trade, um, our funded accounts and then give it all to our favorite charity toys for tots or something. We can really give back and our cost basis on these programs is so low. So I've approached them. We haven't made it all come together. So if you want to just send them an email, go, Hey, I, I'd be down for that. Or, you know, I've heard about maybe a trader trade for the cause funded futures program thing we could do one day during the holidays. Um, I'm trying to get them over the hump because I'm getting, I'm trying to get them to match or exceed, you know, every dollar we make and Very believe fun. me, they have the money to do it. So let's yeah. try to give back. So that's my last little thing and have a great holiday season, everybody. Awesome. Very good. Great way to end it up. And uh, I'll look forward to talking with you soon, Rod. Have a great rest of your weekend. You too. Take it easy. Be good. Bye-bye.
Hey, thanks for watching to the very end. If you enjoyed this episode, there's a good chance you're going to love the other ones. So spend some time on the channel and make sure you show some love on the way out. Now, if you're struggling with your trading and you'd like my help, everything I'm involved with will be linked in the descriptions. Happy trading.